Minneapolis Police Chief. About 12.30 today, Minneapolis police officers received a 911 call of shots fired in this area. The Minneapolis police officers responded and they were flagged down at this driveway to my left uh, by individuals who said there was a person that was shooting from a balcony on the apartment building behind me. Uh, officers then were able to locate uh, two victims. One is the ex-girlfriend of the individual that was shooting, as well as her current boyfriend. Uh, other officers responded. The police, police secured this driveway here. Other officers responded and eventually made their way into the building and identified the apartment. Police officers were uncertain if the individual was still in that apartment at that time. The investigation continued. Uh, police officers learned that the uh, two parties had a child in common. Uh, and so Minneapolis police responded to a daycare located within the 5th precinct where that child was and uh, the child was secured. The daycare was placed into lockdown uh, and, and the child was delivered to uh, another family member. While the officers were here, uh, through investigative investigations, they were able to uh, locate the victim and then determine that he was no longer in Minneapolis. Uh, officers were able to make contact with the suspect via phone and our crisis negotiators were on the phone with the individual uh, for some time. Um, after he left Minneapolis, uh, obviously uh, it appears that crimes occurred, that uh, some tragedy has occurred outside of the city, uh, and that occurred western in western counties. And I don't have specific information as to what happened west of the city. Uh, eventually, police officers executed a search warrant at the apartment behind me, uh, and confirmed uh, that there were no other victims uh, located at, at this apartment. Um, it, it has been a, a busy day here in the city. Uh, this was a very taxing situation, and I know um, it's weighing especially heavy on the crisis negotiators that were on the phone with this individual. Um, I know our officers did absolutely everything they could, uh, but it appears clear that this person uh, was homicidal and, and I'm thankful uh, that no one else uh, was uh, was injured in this, uh, and that our law enforcement partners uh, in different counties in Minnesota were able to put this person in custody. I can answer any questions regarding what happened here in Minneapolis. So, um, when the officers initially responded. Uh, they believed he was still inside. They were not certain. They did not know uh, and didn't initially know for sure uh, whether or not other people were inside. Then it was clear uh, after speaking to the victim, learning that, uh, that there was no one else inside, but still the officers uh, eventually executed a search warrant to actually confirm, uh, yeah, confirm that. Um, it appears there was an altercation uh, between these two uh, parties prior to the shots being fired. Uh, that one party was here to get belongings uh, from the residents, and then the altercation then led to uh, shots being fired at the parties while they were in the driveway by the individual who uh, was on the balcony. That being said, um, I do not have any information uh, to indicate that there had been a history of domestic violence between these two individuals. However, uh, you know, I would remind the community uh, that whenever folks are in a situation, uh, you know, that may be elevated due to heat of passion or, or something involving a relationship, if folks want to, uh, they can make arrangements and, and police will uh, come and assist uh, and stand by if it's needed and the party can be treated. With such a large police presence available, any clue on how this guy was a little bit free? Um, don't know for sure exactly when, uh, but obviously the officers, the initial officers that responded were flagged down here and advised that the shooting was happening here by an individual on the balcony. So the officers did exactly what they were trained to do, uh, which was set up a position here and get folks here out of harm's way while other officers then went into the building. Uh, which was which was you know, fairly quickly uh, getting into the building. So even though they were in the building and identified the, the apartment, it just wasn't clear to them if the person was still inside or not, or if there were other potential victims in need of aid. Uh, it just it took a, a few minutes to sort those things out.
Yeah. So Chief O'Hara, thank you for your time. When you all realized that he wasn't here, um, can you kind of explain the process of what Minneapolis police did because several other parties were involved? Um, yeah. Did you contact, um, you know, different agencies? Yes, there were so. different agencies. We identified where he was. Uh, and how was that? Uh, the officers were able to identify where he was. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to you know, go further on that. Uh, there were alerts sent to counties west of uh, Minneapolis. Uh, as it was clear, he was on the move. Uh, and uh, certainly, I think by that point, we had established phone contact with him as well, which the negotiators uh, were on the phone uh, trying to do everything they can to get this person to peacefully surrender. Eventually he did, uh, but unfortunately it appears that other crimes occurred before that happened, which is tragic. Chief, is this the, the victim's department or the suspect's department? I don't have that. Uh, I, I don't know who's on the lease. Uh, I do know that the, the victim was here to retrieve the property that was hers, uh, and the suspect was inside. mind um things like this people that we've spoken to today are just kind of concerned about this area um and kind of it um we've talked to some that have been very emotional because they claim this area didn't used to have situations of this such do you mind just kind of speaking to the community in regards to ones that say oh uptown oh lynn lake i'm staying away from that area it used to be this spot yeah. um, a situation like this doesn't really paint that picture yeah. Well, um, this is an instance of domestic violence. Domestic violence happens not just in cities, but in communities big and small all across the country. Uh, certainly there is truth to what residents are telling you uh, and what their lived experience has been. The city has changed over the last few years, uh, particularly after 2020. And there are places that we are concerned about that we have uh, an increase of street crime and street violence. Uh, but this is not an instance um, that is the same as that. This is not, uh, you know, like other forms of violence that are happening. Uh, this, this is domestic violence, which is different. Um, and these two parties, obviously, this type of situation could have happened in, in any community. Yeah. And just to reiterate, you can't confirm the conditions of, and even if someone was shot here. I don't. Uh, I'm hearing that, but I don't have official information. Any thoughts for fire coming out? I don't know exactly how many. I know we covered uh, shell casings on the ground uh, in, the, uh, in the alleyway behind the DFW. Roughly I don't know. And was the, the suspect making any sort of demands during this episode? Uh, there was uh, demands made to negotiators uh, to try to work through, um, but that's not. We heard. Um, from a resident that residents weren't notified from the complex till like two hours later they got a email from the complex. I know you can't speak on behalf of the complex, but does the police department encourage or work with any big living areas of this such to train if something were to happen of this regard or is that something you all offer or will entertain? You yeah, know? Um, the police department has done training for businesses and for in particular houses of worship. Uh, I can't think of what we had if there's been residents in this right. But we have, unfortunately, we have had similar instances recently. Within the last few weeks, we're at 15 East Grand Street in a similar situation where we had to evacuate residents and so on. But um, yeah, I mean, we have, uh, and we have civilian professional staff that are crime prevention specialists that are available to go out and do site surveys and to assist uh, you know, any organization or community residents about things that can be done both to target pardon to prevent crime in general but also what could be done in the event of emergency we have staff that are really important. Can I reiterate, were any of the two victims shot? The individuals here were shot at. They were, thank God, they were not injured. There was no one injured here. Yes. You would say Candy, Ohio County. Where? Yes. Uh, well, that's one of the counties involved. I believe at least one crime happened there. All right, one more question. 
Anyone? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.